Hi guys, it's Silas for Kit Guru, and today we're taking a look at the brand new Rokat Khan AMO headset. So let's start with the basics. The Khan AMO is a USB based PC specific headset with a built in DAC and amp and for £120 you also get Rokat's brand new AMO intelligent lighting software. In the box we find the headset itself and the information documents and that's kind of it. Unfortunately with this product we don't find any stickers which is something that I've come to expect with Rokat's peripherals. The headset as well feels relatively lightweight, which is great in the context of wearing. But when unboxing the Khan, you can't help but feel like you've purchased a much cheaper headset than the £120 asking price. Once the packaging is removed, the headset feels flexible and solid, although there had been a few creaks initially. After handling the headset for a couple of minutes, this became non-existent. In appearance, I would actually say the Rokat Khan looks pretty good. Uh, a little bit lighter weight and sleeker, with a bit more of a futuristic Batman appearance. And the smaller profile of both the ear cups and the headband have the headphones looking a little bit more regular than other gaming headsets. The more discreet microphone also hides away against the headband itself when not in use. The headset features a pretty clean exterior with some slightly ghosted Rokat branding on either side of the ear cups and both the logo and the headset name on opposing sides. The AMO lighting is also referenced on the headband. The braided USB 2.0 cable is also a welcome addition but this does mean that you are limited to connecting the headset to a PC or laptop rather than being able to use it cross-platform. The cross-platform support is by no means an advertised feature of the Rokat Khan headset though, so this is very easily forgiven. The construction is predominantly plastic, which helps with the lightweight feel, but there is a metal band running through the headset back with plastic, which also makes it feel significantly more durable. The ear cups and headband also feature memory foam padding and a faux leather exterior, which does help quite a bit with the comfort. This also helps with passive noise isolation, which is relatively common now for closed-backed over-ear headphones. The ear cups can also be twisted 90 degrees, but only towards the back of the headset, which helps a little with comfort, but I found this was more useful for portability and storage when flattening the headset out and putting it in a rucksack, for instance. Overall, the Khan AMO headset is a very comfortable headset to wear, even for longer gaming sessions, and I found I didn't really develop any pressure points even when wearing for longer periods of time. The microphone as well, I found had a big range of adjustability, and it didn't really tend to flex back out of position when left for periods of time. It didn't tend to flex back, which is good, and it also meant that it can be positioned closer to the headband when not in use for a more discreet look. On the right hand ear cup, you find a small volume adjustment wheel, and a button for turning on or off the 7.1 surround sound functionality. The microphone also has a small switch built into the hinge for disabling the microphone when not in use and lifting upright. This is a recent addition which I've really come to appreciate from headphone manufacturers as it's super easy to use and makes a load of sense to simply lift the microphone out of the way to mute it. Now, I much prefer controls built onto the headset themselves rather than an inline controller, as I typically tend to find that this is much easier to find when you're in a hurry. And although you might find that the controls on the headphones themselves are a little bit smaller for bigger hands, they are well positioned, which makes them quick and easy to locate when needed. Overall, I actually really like the build and the look of the Rokat Khan headset. They're actually impressively light, only 275 grams, and this adds hugely to the comfort when wearing for extended sessions. I also like that the microphone hides away very subtly on the side of the headset, which also helps to not make them look overall kind of too gamerish or shouty. And the subtle branding on these sides is also very nice to see. Outside of using them at my computer or laptop, I could actually see myself wearing them out and about. Now, one of the key differences with the Khan AMO headset, uh, which does follow suit with some of Rokat's other peripherals, is the inclusion of the AMO intelligent lighting on the headset itself. This is designed to sync with other Rokat AMO peripherals and is configurable through the Swarm software. So let's take a look at that. Now, I've recently taken a look at Rokat's new Horde AMO keyboard. Uh, that meant that I had to install the Swarm software to get that keyboard up and running, so I was expecting the process of setup to be relatively easy with the Khan AMO headset. As I would expect, I booted up the Swarm software and was immediately prompted to download a quick update to get the Rokat Khan headset up and running. Not a problem, but when I actually went through to start downloading it, I immediately encountered an error where the download for the update immediately jumped from 0% to 100%, kind of became a bit of a loop and it was seemingly never ending. 
I tried the auto update option and I messed around with some settings only to really kind of give up at the end and figure well it's much easier to uninstall the software and start from scratch which is exactly what I did. Once the uninstall and reinstall was completed I was back in business. Immediately the Swarm software recognized the Roket Khan headset. Now this isn't a problem I would expect most users to encounter when starting out with the Khan Amo headset. But after setting up a bunch of profiles for the Horde keyboard and configuring a lot of lighting, it was pretty irritating to have to start from scratch. Now this I'm sure could be an issue that only I encountered and if not, if it's slightly more widespread, I'm sure because it's a software update based remedy, this will be fixed in time. But as the software is pretty integral to the user experience of the Khan headset, I would really appreciate the process to be a little bit simpler. Especially if you've already gone out and bought a bunch of other ROCAP peripherals. The Swarm software offers the same options as the Horde with options for fully lit, heartbeat and breathing modes and I would have liked to have seen similar zone options of the Horde considering the lighting sections on the Khan are very separate. But then this is a pretty compact headset so this can be excused. The lighting only appears on a couple of sections of the ear cups which is understandable considering they're a headset and not a keyboard. But when paired with other AMO optimized peripherals, it does really help to unify them all together and adds to the LED-ness of your setup. Once again, Rocat, if you could bring your AMO intelligent lighting software to an internal PC LED strip, I'd probably pre-order one. Flipping through software options finds you at the audio adjustments preset with the Khan headset. And this is where things start to get a little bit more interesting. The requirement for the USB connection on the headset is due to the inbuilt 24-bit 96kHz DAC amp combo, which opens up a huge range of adjustment within the Swarm software for configuring sound profiles. And the high-res audio support is also a big plus for those with big collections of media in either the WAV, say, or FLAC audio formats. Out of the box, I was actually incredibly impressed with the sound provided by the 50mm neodymium magnet drivers. They offered a really nice balanced audio profile, not too bass or treble heavy, and I actually found the sound to be incredibly clean from the headset as well. After a couple of days of use, I actually found that the default setting within the Swarm audio software kind of worked as my preference for pretty much all media consumption and even for a broader range of music. Even after I'd played around with a bunch of settings and set up some of my own profiles, I typically tended to find myself reverting back to just the default. The audio quality is solid for general media consumption, but the listed profiles show the Khan's strength in gaming with options for FPS's, MMO's and RPG's just to name a few. These profiles I found didn't work 100% the best for the types of games they represented but they did work really well providing a variety of options and switching between them is super fast and super easy with only a very minor delay in activating. You can play around with the presets but you also have the option for creating your own EQ and custom profiles and this is really cool. The massive selection of options for surround settings as well as the bass EQ options for prioritizing vocal clarity means that you could be configuring your perfect in-game settings for hours while you dial it in. The 7.1 surround sound actually worked incredibly well in instances of gaming and when testing with things like the virtual barbershop that you find on YouTube, I was actually left really impressed. When listening to some YouTube videos though with some cleaner dialogue, it did come through a little bit too sharp and pretty echoey for me. Although when switching back to the standard 2.0 option, it's a pretty quick fix and resolve the issue. I found quickly that the button on the right hand ear cap was almost designed specifically for this, making it very very easy to toggle between 7.1 and 2.0. This also saved me from jumping into the Swarm software every time that I wanted to change this setting, but for pretty much everything else, I just left 7.1 surround sound enabled. For the microphone, settings aren't quite as intense, but you do get some options for sensitivity and noise cancellation on and off. And something I found pretty fun, the magic voice options, which mess with your voice to make you sound like a monster, which is cool. A cartoon character, which I can foresee being pretty irritating. Or even a man. Or a lady. I received no complaints in chat and the microphone tended to offer incredibly clean audio performance, which is great as long as you ensure that magic voices turned off. Overall, the quality was brilliant, both out of the headset itself and into the microphone. And after using the Khan headset for a number of days, I can safely say that I'd be incredibly satisfied if I'd actually gone out and bought one myself. Now, when finishing up this review, I was actually feeling really positive about the new Khan AMO headset. 
Really impressed with the audio quality, the comfort and the looks. And then suddenly when in use, the headset itself just suddenly completely cut out, no audio through the ear cups and Windows completely failed to recognize it. The Swarm software didn't even recognize the headset and even unplugging and replugging in the USB cable didn't seem to resolve this. I had to go for a physical reboot of my computer, um, followed by unplugging and replugging in the headset in a number of different USB ports before it was re-recognized by both Windows, my computer, and the Swarm software. Now, I would say that this only happened once, and it's to be taken with a pinch of salt, but alongside the original software issues that I had encountered, did leave me feeling like there might be a bit of an underlying software issue, something which might need to be resolved. My experience with the Khan headset is that when it works, it works great. The audio is flawless and the microphone is very, very impressive in terms of its quality. The experience would have been seamless and without these kind of minor software issues, the Khan probably would have got a completely perfect 10 out of 10 score from me. And again, I would stress that these could only be issues which I encountered. As a user, you might purchase the headset, the setup process be great and you never encounter an issue where it drops out of functionality completely. But these small software issues did leave me feeling a little bit deflated. So in summary, there's actually a huge amount that I can say that's really, really positive about the new Khan AMO headset. I found it incredibly comfortable in use and really, really solid in build quality despite its impressive lightness. And when you consider that the packaging was not super premium, but then equally you are getting a built-in DAC and amp in a headset for about £120. The lighting as well pairs really well with other Rocat Emo peripherals and it's not too overpowering. And with the sound being so impressive and through software loads of customization for both not only the audio coming out of the headset but also going into the microphone, it's a total winner in my eyes. And at the end of the day, the software was a little bit up and down for me, but again, it's software. It can be updated down the line, it can be improved, and there is always the potential of other features being added. Equally though, for those with a host of other peripherals from Rocat that already make use of the Swarm software, I really hope these initial installation issues don't cause loads of headaches and tons of worry about reinstallation and losing some profiles. So let us know in the comments what you think of the new Rocat Khan AMO headset. Do the benefits of the inbuilt DAC and AMP and the necessity of a USB-based connection outweigh the ability for cross-platform support? Or would you prefer to stick with some standard 3.5mm cans and improve the audio of your system internally? Make sure you like this video if you liked it, and if you want future updates from KitGuru on new and upcoming videos, don't forget to hit subscribe. Once again, I've been Silas for KitGuru, and I will see you in the next one.